Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Indie Plus Spotlights Techniques uh, show, where we take particular techniques of role-playing games, and we break them apart, look at their parts, look at how they work, look at how you can use them in your games, different things that you should know about those techniques. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about the technique called fishing. Uh, so I am here to discuss this technique with... Hi, my name is Tara Zuber. And I'm Brendan Conway. Part of what I wanted out of this was to have myself and Tara here, because Tara brings in a different perspective. Tara brings in different knowledge. I wanted this um, going back and forth where we would illuminate different things of these techniques and things that I take for granted she would call out. So with all that said, let's talk about phishing. So phishing is a technique for asking leading questions. It's a technique for trying to get information out of the players and build the setting at the same time. Tara, do, do you have any elaboration upon what phishing is? Um, like you said, it's a way to co-create the world that everyone's going to be living within during the game. I, li I like that way to put it, too. It's a way to co-create the world. That's a great way to phrase it. Uh, for some of this, we're going to be referring back to a video, which will be in the show notes, uh, of when Indie Plus played a spotlight game for Urban Shadows. It was run by Mark Diaz Truman, and Mark asked a lot of these fishing leading questions uh, to help tell us about our characters or, or fill in the world around our characters. So Tara, what is the best place to use fishing? When doing character development or the role development at the beginning, um, just to get everyone on the same page regarding what the world is like and making sure that everyone's expectations are the same as well. Because if everyone's giving similar kinds of answers to the questions, then I know like the kind of tone that everyone's going for. So, I mean, that's actually interesting because I didn't think about the idea that you would use fishing not just to establish the fiction, but also to ensure everybody's on the same page tonally um, to begin with. That's an interesting starting point. This technique uh, often requires you to think on the fly about um, what questions to ask, especially because you're building immediately off of what was literally just said to you a moment ago. Um, you, you like, and it, it's a question that crops up in your head. For me, it often is that equivalent of when I'm watching a TV show or a movie, and a question crops up, and I'm like, wait a minute, how does that work? Or what just happened? Or how does, like, that doesn't make any sense. And you can ask it as, so, who do you assassinate? Or, why do you assassinate bad people? Uh, and therefore, you can actually very specifically guide it towards some vision you have, as well as giving input to the player upon the, the fictional element. Yeah. And I think you point out an important thing there, as well as having that vision ahead of time, that you can kind of guide the player back toward. Um, and that might be a partial answer to the question I'm about to ask, is how do you know when you're asking the right questions, or the, the questions that are going to lead to the most interesting fiction? To me... The answer is what I'm interested in. If I'm already invested in the answer, if I want to know the answer to this question, then I'm already excited about it and I'm already bringing an energy to it that will make that answer better. I think that in the moments that you're asking these questions, you, the GM, are actually acting not as, say, necessarily the producer or the director. You're acting as that audience member. You're like, oh, neat. That's a cool thing you just said about your character. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more? I want to know more about how your character works. I want to know more about your cool character. I think one of the leading questions Mark asked me at a certain point is, for instance, how do how do vampires work in the city? This is in the Urban Shadows game. And, like, do they have territories and so on and so forth? And that was Mark in that moment saying, I am interested in vampires in this story. I want to know how they work. Please tell me I'm the audience, not, I'm not, and, and you know, it's, it's that weird thing where you, as you call it out, you're pushing and pulling at the same time. Well, what, what do you think, Tara? What, what would be a good question, a good, like, fishing question that you would like? What would be a bad fishing question? A bad fishing question might be one that's too limited, and you don't really give the player any choice in what they say, um, where that's much less fishing and more forcibly guiding them to your vision. Um, other than that, just hoping that the things I found interesting were also the things that the player thought was interesting as well. So I'm not asking them, you know, question after question about this one topic, when they're like, but but I have all this other stuff planned, ask me about it instead. No, that's, that's an excellent point. Yeah, you don't want to be too wrapped up in your own stuff. Right. It actually brings us to uh, the, the idea of, well, what happens if I ask you a question 
and then I ask somebody else a question, and they're both leading questions, but they contradict. So I, I ask you, like, how do... Well, let's, I'll go back to the example. How do vampires work? This, I, I think you called out this, this happened in the video. How do vampires work, I ask you, and then I go to somebody else, and I say, and um, what kind of vampires do you hunt? Do you hunt that kind? Um, and trying to sync those answers up together because they might dispute with each other. So, um, Tara, what, what do you think about trying to make the, the questions either fit together or uh, not contradict each other, or how? what's the best way to intermesh them, do you think? Goodness. Um, either it's going to be a GM who is then thinking, okay, well, they said, they said these things, and I'm going to make it work somehow. Or perhaps beforehand um, talking to all the players and be like, you know, listen to other people's answers and take them into consideration whenever you're crafting your own answers. Um, setting some kind of norm ahead of time so that people are listening to and reacting not just to you, the GM, but also to their fellow players. Right, that's a very good point, yeah. Because you want people to build off not just what you said to them, but what they have been saying to each other as much as possible. Um, and, and on that point, too, that's actually, so there's this notion in, in Apocalypse World of building PC, NPC, PC triangles. That's a really complex way of saying, um, my character's wife is somebody your character hates. And that, and that way we have very different ideas of this one character, and we come at them differently. Leading questions are brilliant for doing this. So this is, I, I go to you, Tara, and I'm like, okay, so, so who are you closest to? Um, which is a leading question. I'm immediately implying you are close to somebody. Uh, and then you answer. So, so what would you say? Let's just say that, again, this is urban shadows. We're in the middle of an urban fantasy. So who are you closest to, Tara? I am closest to my coworker. Um, he and I share everything after work, rants, drinks, everything. Awesome. Best friend. Best friend is the coworker. Excellent. Okay. And so then after that's over, I turn to... Uh, the next player, I turn to Terra 2, and I say, so Terra 2, what kind of drug does the coworker buy from you? Uh, and now you have to answer that question that I've just, I've just like put in this crazy bit, right? This is a leading question. I've added something to the fiction merely by asking the question. The coworker does drugs, and mm -hmm. he gets them from the other PC, uh, while still leaving it open. So Terra 2, how do you answer that? He buys um, some kind of supernatural drug from me. Um, like fairy wing dust or something. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's great, too, because now you've said fairy wing dust. So you know me. I'm going to be like, fairy wing dust? Wait a minute. Where do you get that stuff? I, I need to know more about this fairy wing dust drug trade that we've just created out of nowhere, out of a couple of leading questions. Like, that. this is the power of the leading questions. It allows me to create tension between the two PCs immediately. It creates these different relationships. And there's one other thing I want to call out about this. So, I mean, Tara, I'm actually going to ask you, if I had said to you, if I had said to you, so, um, Tara 2, where do you get your drugs? And you've never before um, brought up that your character does drugs, right? That was not a thing at all. Uh, how, how do you feel about that as a technique? How do you think that that would work? I would be annoyed, one. Like, okay, so I do drugs, great. Um, and then would have to actually think through, it would take a little bit longer to answer, I think. So, uh, in, and in that case, part of the problem is, like, I've, in some ways, trodden all over what you may have had in your head, or, like, right? I've taken, I've taken some of your agency away for your character. Um, Completely changed what I thought my character was like. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think there may be some games where that's okay, but it's the type of game where we agree at the start that, like, this is a thing that I can do. I can, I can sort of mess with your character a little bit, and you just gotta roll with the punches. It's but again, that's show. setting it up at the start. Yes, And exactly. making sure everyone is agreeing to that ahead of time. Exactly. What would be a better way for me to do that? What would be a better way for me to ask you a question that says something about you, but it's not, like, tromping all over you in that same way? It's not completely changing your notion of who you are. Well, if you really wanted my character to have something to do with drugs, then potentially asking how the character was involved in the drug trade and then that's saying that you are involved with the drug trade, but then I get to decide, am I a consumer? Am I producing it? Do I procure the drugs? Am I just selling them? And that way, there's a bit of that give and take still. Mm. So uh, let's, let's talk about another element of, of these uh, fishing. So, all right, go ahead. Ask me a leading question, Tara. Doing character creation, I am assuming. Um... I, I am playing, let's just say I'm playing uh, 
from the video. I'm playing Nathaniel Chen. I'm playing a vampire. I uh, have an MBA, right? I'm, I'm living in Baltimore. Uh, I go to parties a lot. I'm a little bit of a jerk. A little bit. Don't okay. Think. All right. So you're a vampire with a business degree. That's interesting. Um, what kind of business do you do? I wish I knew business better. I do, um, can I just say finance? <laughs> sure, um, sure. Um, so how do you get your clients then? Actually, I, at this stage, um, because I'm useful to the vampire who made me into a vampire, I get them through her, actually. She has been helping my career by feeding me powerful, influential people uh, okay. as my clients. So what kind of obligation does that create between you and her then? If any. Uh, uh, if she's uh, helping your business in this way, does it create any kind of obligation that you have toward her? Or is this just her fulfilling her end of being your sire? All right, so I want to pause here. Because that's exactly what I wanted to highlight. Um, <laughs> Tara knocked it out of the park, right? That moment where I'm like, ah, uh, what's up? And then she started feeding me options. Um, because now... Now I have like categories that I could go with or I can build off or I can tweak and change. But essentially Tara got my gears spinning and gave me some, some really good options if I wanted to just take those and move on. And that's just fine. And they can ignore your ideas too, which is great. Um, but at least it gets the conversation started. So like Tara, what, what were you thinking about when you were doing that? Like what, what prompted the questions or the, the ideas you were proposing and what prompted you to start proposing those? Initially, as you saw, I was having difficulty coming up with any kind of question. So I just took what you gave me. I'm like, okay, how does that work? Um, and so then I just kept waiting and listening to you until I reached something that I could actually grab onto a little bit more. In this case, your, um, the vampire who created you feeding you clients. So it was like, okay, what exactly then is the cost? And that's why I kept pushing on that because that cost could then also establish things about the wider world. I, I love it. And there's, I want, I want to draw attention to something you said at the very beginning of this too, which was you were looking for something to ask. And what you did was you said, how does that work? I think that's like a great starting point for asking these leading questions. What, what does it take, not on, not on the GM side, asking the leading questions? What is it for the player side being asked these leading questions, like what what should you do to answer them well, uh, or or what do you need to keep in mind? Well, when the when you're asking these questions and you're answering the questions, just thinking that you're not just taking a quiz or filling out you know a questionnaire, you are working with the GM to create this world and to create your character and to create the game that you're playing. So if you say no, then try to offer something else like no I'm not but I know someone who is or no I'm not and then you know I've seen people around something like that or maybe it's like I don't want to do this at all it's like give you like a pile of stones or something and like <laughs> you just gotta occasionally give some back you just can't hoard them or else nothing you gets collectively it. made you nailed it no at saying no and just ending it there is not doing the best you can uh, to work with the GM to fill in the worlds to answer these questions, but saying no but or no and or even yes but and yes and, it, that's fantastic because that always adds more from you in addition to answering the question and filling in what the GM wanted you to fill in. Are you involved in the drug trade? No, but my brother is. Oh, snap. I'm, I'm down. So hopefully uh, this video is of use to anybody who's watching. Hopefully you've gotten uh, a better idea of how to use leading questions, how to frame them, how to think of them, how to respond to them even. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments for this video and we'll try our best to respond um, cogently. And thank you very much, Tara, for being here. Uh, very greatly appreciate your presence and your expertise. Thank you for asking me. This was a lot of fun. All right, thank you everybody. Good night.